All right, Brenda K. Star is with us today. I'm so glad uh, you accepted my invite. How are you? I'm good. And of course, Chet, who wouldn't accept your invite? You're so pleasant. And from the moment I met you, there was a beautiful connection. You have a beautiful heart and uh, just everything about you is so welcoming. So thank you for this opportunity. You. I appreciate that. And I know today's a special day. You had a single drop, right? Tell us about that before we get into everything else. Today was the release of El Pez Muero por la Boca, una canción que yo tuve la oportunidad de grabar en español en salsa. Uh -huh. It was an opportunity that I had to read new music for the new album and for the new production that I'm putting on Star Records. And today was the first release. It's El Pez Muero por la Boca. It was produced by Junito Davila and written by Jorge Piloto and Noel Enriquez. And um, it's just an amazing feeling to to be a woman in this business and taking the bull by the horns and trying to do it on my own and, and with the blessings of God and, and great yeah. people that stepped into my circle, we've been able to land a deal in Latin America with Sony Latino. Wow, congratulations again, that's awesome. And is that, a, is that a, like a, a saying? The pez muere, is it pez muere por la boca? Okay, el pez muere por la boca is like the saying like, the more you talk, you know, people say, oh. you know, so I'm not using the S-H-I-T word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. in all respect, it says, you know, keep talking here, but keep talking, keep yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. Because one day, whatever you say, it's going to make your mouth stink. And you know how fish stink when they die. So, el peste voy a morir en la boca. Now, so se mueren en la boca means it leaves a bad, like, olor, taste. Like a taste. So, um, That's good. Yeah. It, it's, it's a new saying now. No, not many people have ever said that. I've never heard he it. The, no. And when he wrote the song, it's, it's about seven years old, that song. Okay. Uh, and I just held it near and dear to my heart. I was going to release it. But after getting a release from Sony in, in US, um, I, I kind of held back on releasing it. And uh, I just always loved that song because it had such beautiful meaning because I'm one that has went through that experience where yeah. that there's so many people in the industry, especially, I mean, it's, everybody says, you know, you're as good as your last hit. And so many people love you when you're on the top, but mm -hmm. when you're down and struggling, nobody pays attention to you. Nobody gives yeah. you the love and support you need. And the people that you think are the closest to you are the one that talk the worst about you. For me, my revenge was success. And, and that right. when I heard the song, it was written specific, specifically for me. I don't know. I guess he, uh, you, you know, I just really think that Jorge Piloto was reading my mind and knew what I was going through. And when he called me and said, I have an amazing song for you and it's going to fit you perfect. When I heard it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is something that I know <laughs> is so relatable for everyone. So yeah, right. it just means talking all that crap and you know sooner or later whatever you say is going to make you look horrible and that bad taste is going to stay in your mouth and everything that you wish negative upon me whether it be in a relationship whether yeah. it be in a job environment it doesn't only take jealousy to be a musician there's jealousy in every way state and form in this world today we have it going on right now there's so much hatred and problems but yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a song about about you know talking crap and don't worry keep talking because in the long run you're the one that's gonna have a bad taste in your mouth and breath's gonna smell <laughs> <laughs> you smell like a fish <laughs> maybe a bacalao yeah maybe a bacalao <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah exactly it stinks well that's i mean that's a that's a that's a slang i've never heard but i definitely can understand uh when, once you explained it and i probably would use it we'll use it myself going forward <laughs> Yes, they're going to be, it's so funny because in Ecuador, they started doing some merchandise and it shows like a hook or, or with a fish and it says, el pez muero por la boca. So it's like people are starting to say, oh, we're going to get the shirts from and then it has my signature. But um, uh, yeah, it's going to definitely be a saying. <laughs> it's real cool. I mean, I, I love salsa and it's cool to hear people uh, still wanting to make salsa. Um, I, I so many times have desired to go to a salsa concert and we do, I, li I live in Orlando now. Those concerts are here. I mean, I, I met you at one. For people to create new, new salsa music is great because it's a culture that is 
deep in our roots. And I know that now that we were seeing a, a, a big urban movement and it's great. We can't forget about our salsa. Well, you see, that was the reason when I had a best with la Oca this many years ago, and salsa was doing well, but I was going through a transition with right. um, leaving Sony in the States because there were so many changes up in the, in the U.S. office. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave. I loved being with Sony. I felt like they were a great support team and everything was working out well, but then changes started taking place. And that's mm -hmm. when I left Sony because I almost felt like I did an album and I just wasn't being heard. So I mm -hmm. had that song. But when I did reach out to Jorge Piloto to say, listen, I want to release this song. And not when I wanted to release it now. This was way back. Okay. And I said, I just don't know. Like what? And he was like, Brenda, right now, it's really not the right time. You know, mm -hmm. Sasa is not doing anything. Everything is about reggaeton. Everything right. is about urbano. He goes, you may want to think about that. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to put it out and let it go to waste. Right. So I, did wait. I did wait. And I just felt like now was, was the perfect time. I, I put this plan together. I mean, I've been working really hard, you know, Chef. I've been writing my yeah. music, English and Spanish. I've been studying, you know, the language, the accents. I mean, I know I'm Latina, but I was born and raised in Manhattan and New York City in the White House Projects. So for right. me, a majority of my life, my, my primary language was English. So me too. That being said, I didn't I didn't know the language as best as I should to respect my culture. Uh -huh. So I had been sitting and studying and watching the news and novelas and Casa Cerrado. <laughs> Ana Maria Polo. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, my Spanish just continues to get better, gracias a Dios. But um, you know, at the time that you know they wanted to release the song, or I wanted to release the song, it just wasn't the right time because you know we got Nicky Jam, we got Daddy Yankee, we got yeah. Osuna, we got you know Farouk, we got Becky yeah. G, we got this one, we got that one, Navy Queen. You know, it's, it's, and I love it. Don't get me wrong, I would right. love right. like uh, a type of hop on on one of their songs, but um. And I was just like, I'm going to wait. And when I do it, I pray to God it'll do something. And I've just right. been blessed the last four months. Everything has just been a whirlwind. It's just one thing after another. And Man, I can't awesome. complain because, you know, this is all I do. Right, right. That's awesome. And, you know, you you mentioning um, some of those names. I have been able to work or photograph Evie Queen. And I hear her say the same thing about, you know, the industry and how it goes, there's ups and downs. And sometimes when you're down, people forget about you and stuff like that. <laughs> I would love to see you do a, a song sometimes in the future, maybe sometime in the future with somebody like that. Would you do something like that? A collab with somebody that maybe you respect totally. in the industry? Yeah. Totally, totally. Evie Queen, <clears throat> yeah. obviously one of my favorite. you know, I'm yeah. loving the you youngins out there, Becky G. Yeah. Uh, but I really, really, really have a, a something for Ozuna. I just yeah. would love to work with him. I watched him when they did Ozuna? Yes, I love him. Yeah, I think yeah. He's phenomenal. I think he's amazing yeah. as an artist. I just feel his genuineness. Something yeah. about him is just so pure. And mm -hmm. I love the way he is when I watch him with his kids and all the little segments yeah. that he throws up on, you know, social media. But more than that, I just feel like he has such a genuine heart. And um, I obviously right. watched the Mickey Jam movie, and yeah. it was very incredible. And I thought I watched it; it was an unbelievable movie to watch. And so those would be my two favorite: Ozuna and uh, Mickey Jam. Mickey Jam. And yeah. from females, I would say, you know, uh, Becky G, or or obviously yeah. Eve Queen, the Queen yeah. of all queens. Queen. And you guys both have that New York swag. Yeah, we got the. You know, you know how we roll. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, I mean, we've speak, been speaking about Spanish music, but a lot of people know you from back in the day as well, starting off in like more of the uh, house music. I, would, I mean, that's what I would call it. Is that what you, you the genre that you were in when you first started? Um, you know, I, I do do a lot of recordings in English and I'm still writing. Um, mm -hmm. There was a song called Love Me Like the First Time that was on my first album which I did write, and I plan on putting that one on my new English album and doing a more updated version. Yeah, okay. um, I wrote a song called Rise Up. Um, I'm doing a song called um, Fall Out of Love. I have to tell you, I have received so many demos from different writers, and um, <clears throat> I just heard this song, and as soon as I heard this song, I'm like, this is my song. Like, 
I'm going to like sing it like it's never been sung before. I I have been listening to that song, if I tell you, and I'm promoting a best for the world, but I've been listening <laughs> to that song at least 10 times a day. And wow. I cannot wait to put the vocal down. And I think it's going to be my English ballad comeback song. And it's a ballad. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. that's going to come out. And um, I would love to do a remix of it in a dance version. But um, yeah, I will. I did a song called Body of Proof that's on the new English album. I think you've heard it. I yeah. did it at the last show when we were in Orlando. Yeah. Um, I've also, you know, I, I continue to write, you know, I did a song called Hold Me. I read the Cuba, remember Cuba? Quiero mm -hmm. la salsa. Mm -hmm. So I redid that one. And I just do that one for my shows, but for the right. new English album, it's going to be very pop urban. It's going to be crossover potential. I, um, I want to do music that can, we be, can that can, um, give me the opportunity to cross over into uh you know top 40 music i see yeah. myself reinventing myself as a as a, a latin whitney houston i want to do ballads. i want yeah. to do dance i just want to yeah. do stuff that the world can relate to and and, and that's my goal and i I'm, i know that i'm not as young as a lot of the girls out there now well you're looking younger than a lot of the girls out there <laughs> thank you i can tell you that i'm wiser and that more than being wiser, I have really, really taken a leap of faith and, and decided that everything around me that has been negative, I'll mm -hmm. block myself from that energy and I'll continue to work hard. I mean, I know I've seen, I know you see the interviews that I've done. Yeah. I did really badly with, with mental health issues. I have really bad anxiety, yeah. depression. And every day- A lot of people do. Yeah, and I, and I realized that. And I think for many years, I kept saying, oh, it's this person, it's that person. Oh, they're full of crap. They're just after me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I, I really just sat back and decided, you know what, I'm not going to be embarrassed anymore about mm -hmm. feeling this way and I'm going to get help. So, yeah. I, you know, I speak to someone on a regular. And yeah. um, even, even my kids, I tell them, even if you feel a certain way, it's always good to have someone to talk to and vent with. Right. The problem with me is I grew up so quickly. I came from a family of seven. My mother was a single mother. Mm -hmm. My dad was on the road. I had five brothers and, sis and my sister. You know, I dealt with, you know, issues in my life that I didn't really address. And my music mm -hmm. was my escape goal. Right. And I feel like if I didn't do music, I wouldn't have been able to survive. Being an artist and, and trying to, to reinvent myself was something that I was trying to do. I didn't want to do something like be something that I'm not. And I wanted to just keep it organic and as, e you know, as, as easy as I could to let the world know that it really doesn't matter how old I am. That I still feel like there's a chance for me to one day get that Latin Grammy. Yeah. And Listen, Celia Cruz was singing to how old was she? Well, Celia Cruz, Celia Cruz sang to she was about 80. Yeah, I think the last two years or so before. Away. I don't know how old she was when she passed away. I did go to her funeral with oh, Victor yeah. Manuel. La vida es un carnaval. Oh, my yeah. God. Wow. It was the most yeah. amazing, amazing session I've ever seen. And it was a beautiful funeral, but I was a wow. big fan. Yeah, yeah. And she was one of my inspirations. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, you, this Brenda K star for a long time. My sister loves you because she grew up on the I Still Believe, and I have that photo here. You have a baby face. It looked like you, they took you out of high school to take that photo. <laughs> oh my I, God, it was on the I Watch Your Love album, and it's the one with the yellow shirt and the gray in it. Well, you you have your knees in, and you kind of you kind of look like Kelly from Saved by the Bell there. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Well, I cut I Still Believe right after I did my demo. I did my demo when I was around 13. It was a birthday gift my oh. mom gave me. And she was like, well, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, I a record. My mother was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so she found out about a company called Dimensional Sounds. Okay. And she said, pick a song. And it was like kind of back in the day. Now we call it karaoke. It had mm -hmm. the tracking and there were big reel to reels. And it was a special that we're running. And I remember like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I think it was $150 for us to do it. And my mother was like okay well i'm gonna take you here and you're gonna sing and i was like really so we went and i sang love on a two-way street 
Oh. And um, they started the music and I recorded it. And the guy looked, I remember my mom told me after I was done, she said that the guy looked at me and he said, how old is she? And she goes, she's 13 <laughs> yesterday. Cause it was the day before my birthday I died. Mm -hmm. And he goes, she's going to be a star. And then mm -hmm. ever since then, my mother used to always be like, you're going to be a star. Don't worry. Even when I was a little kid, you know, she, she always used to tell me I used to get on tables and sing Everlasting Love by Natalie Cole. And I remember on my birthday, I fell off the table and got a concussion and the party ended. But um, I still believe was a, a really great song for me. I think they released it when I was 16. That birthday. song has legacy for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I have another image here where you have two awards in your hand. And I think it's at the at the billboard. Well, those two awards that I got from the Billboard were, you know, Primero Billboard were for the longest playing um, trio. No, for the for the best trio. So accommodating Victor and Tito and myself. Mm -hmm. And then also for the most playing on all radio um, stations. So having, I guess for having most spins. Yeah. So I got that too. But I never knew that I was getting two. I didn't even know I was getting one. I got to tell you really quickly. I know I don't want to <laughs> run like talk your ear off no, no, but no. when i when i did premio no billboards um i was in the middle of a contract situation and um mm -hmm. i wasn't with the label anymore and i didn't know about it till like two weeks before and i didn't even have a hotel i didn't even have um. a dress that was appropriate so when I got there, I was like, oh, I'll just go to the mall shopping, not thinking that, wait a minute, people get stylists. This is like the Oscars. This is like the Grammys. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't yeah. even like put two and two together. But I saw people coming with bags and stylists and this and that because we had to go there and meet up and, and meet all the people that work there. And, yeah. and then there was a room where there's giveaways, et cetera. And then this one lady was like, oh, I have a or the Avenci or the Avenci or this or that gown. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm in trouble. So my husband and I went to South Beach and mm. prior to going to South Beach, I said, for some way, I'm going to get me a dress and a good one. So Santina Mavardi on Ocean, Ocean Boulevard, I think it was in Miami. Mm -hmm. I called the store and I'm like, hello. I'm like, hi, my name is Lisa Vidal. I'm the assistant for Brenda Blue Star. We're here for the Billboard Music Awards and she so loves your designs. And then I went on and made believe I was her and yeah. she would love to see can wear one of your dresses for the red carpet. She said, absolutely, tell her to come on down. If I tell you, Chef, I had nothing to wear, went from nothing to wear to get that beautiful black gown. Wow. She gave me the shoes, she gave me the jewelry, she gave me the dress. Everybody was staying in this big, huge hotel, glamorous hotel. We yeah. had to pay for our own hotel. We got a little motel and paid a hundred bucks. And wow. I didn't even think that I was gonna win. I took a cab to the, to the hotel where everybody yeah. was staying and then Telemundo, Univision, everybody was filming it and nobody knew that I was staying in a motel, wow. nor did they know that I didn't even have a dress appropriate. Wow. And I got in the limo because they sent the limo to pick certain artists up and we had to share limos, but they didn't know I needed a hotel, so they couldn't cover my hotel. So I ended up staying in a motel. Yeah. And then when I got there, when I got when I was sitting in the audience and they said the nominees are and then they call my name and I won. I just couldn't breathe because I almost felt like it wasn't real because I said, hey, listen, right. they didn't give me the hotel. I didn't get this, I didn't get that. I guess I'm not gonna win. Maybe they just want me to be a, a seat filler. Mm -hmm. So I end up going to the awards and sat there when they called my name. I started to cry when I won, but I cried even more because wait a minute, they were like, here, there's another one. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because my Spanish wasn't that good, so I was still right, nervous. Right. So I didn't know, and I was like, "Pero para qué?" And he was like, yeah. "This is the song para you know, tanto you know, pegando la canción por you know, muchas veces a la emisora, por por tener la prim primer lugar con con por ese hombre, you know, el mejor trio." And I'm like, yeah. "Oh my God!" So I just started to cry, and I, I kind I kind of felt like that was my moment where I really felt like I worked so hard and somebody recognized it and they right. gave me not one but they gave me two awards to be proud of and i really really cherish those awards and i keep them in my glass case and and i always show them off and you know i know that they say awards shouldn't um significant you know it shouldn't signify the person you are but sometimes like when people get a raise they feel good about it 
but when you get an award, it makes you feel like your hard work is paying off and that the people really appreciate you. So that was yeah. a really good moment for me. I love the backstory because there's times where people think that, for example, I, me as a photographer, they're like, wow, you photographed this person. And I'm like, y'all don't know the stuff I had to do for that. And sometimes people yeah. don't know the story behind what seems so glamorous. And I have, I have my own stories. I love that you, you share that. And I think it's good for people who are just starting in this industry or maybe in the middle to realize like, hey, I'm not the only ones or wow, like this, this is hard work. Sometimes and you do work hard. But you don't back. Yeah, but and you do work hard because before I even met you, I had never seen any of your work, but you told me <laughs> I'm a photographer. I think you messaged me on Facebook I and you did. said, I know you're going to be in Orlando yeah. and I would love to photograph you. I won't. You know, I just want to photograph you behind the scenes. I mean, I could have been like, oh, bougie. Oh, no. I'm like, I don't know this guy. I just said, yeah, you know, take my, my manager's number. And I knew I could feel the, 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 the struggle and the hustle in you. Yeah. And for me to give anybody an opportunity, I mean, listen, my makeup artist right now is 18 years old. I've had makeup artists all over the world, top notch. Let me tell you something. This kid is supporting his mother and his sister and his brother. His dad passed away. I tried this kid once when he was young. I said, listen, you know, keep working hard. He got so much more better. He did my makeup for the video. He's done my makeup for my shows. For my, I mean, today I did my own little bit of makeup. Yeah, I mean, I'm scared, so I put a little bit of blush, but that's yeah. it. But um, just to see someone want to make it and just persistence is prevalence and knocking down those doors I'm getting at is, that's what I felt with you when I spoke to you. And I was Thank like, you, absolutely. Yeah. And we even yeah. spoke about doing photo shoots together. And, you know, yeah, we stayed in touch after. So, yeah. you know, I, I know how hard you work. And you deserve Thank everything. You. I appreciate yeah. that. Yes, thank you. And, and you as well. Uh, I That trio that you were talking about is obviously with Tito Nieves and Victor Manuel. That's an iconic video. I love the video. I can watch it, like, over and over. I think they did such a great job on the video. And the uh, the chemistry with you you three on camera looked really good. And I mean, you guys are like, in this moment, it's like classic salsa. Like you guys look great. And that's one of the photos I'm looking at. And your your acting is like amazing too and on point. Look at you. <laughs> I was like, oh no, but you know, it wasn't only acting because to be honest with you, I kind of felt like I left Victor to be with Tito, but it should have been Tito to have been with Victor. But how it happened was that I knew Tito because we've crossed each other's paths throughout the industry. Mm -hmm. But it was really my first opportunity. So okay. I only met him when we were filming the video. That was the very first oh, time. Because wow. he recorded his part in Puerto Rico. Okay. Tito recorded his part in Florida and I recorded my part in, in New York mm -hmm. so when we were shooting the video I saw him in the hallway and he was like Hola, Brenda. and I was like hi, hi and I'm like oh my god I'm like yo he's so gorgeous and my husband was like you better be nice and I was like babe come on it's Victor Manuel really he's so hot so my husband was laughing at me he's like okay I'm gonna let you have your fantasy go enjoy yourself <laughs> So we're shooting the video, and I think the chemistry was there because, first of all, I was super nervous, but just the acting and me looking at him and kind of being like, you know, kind of like a little risque and all that. Yeah, yeah. But um, listen, it wasn't all that much acting. I was like, yo, if I'm going to get this close to this guy, I'm going to make it the best I can. So you were a fan of his music before the video? Oh, my goodness, absolutely. <laughs> Exactly. I That's always love this thing. So you see, you know, from the outsiders, for all, all of us who listen to salsa and stuff, I would be like, oh, they've probably known each other for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. that, that would be my intent. You, did you know Tito because of you guys being from New York and having mutual friends or shows together? Uh, mutual friends and shows together. And um, even after um, his son passed away after the video, yeah. I went and did a, a benefit concert for him to raise money for awareness for cancer. Oh, wow. Well, we were donating the money in his son's name. But um, I just, you know, I just knew him as being, you know, like a really humble artist when we first yeah. met. 
And he's like, hey, you know, you're sounding good. I heard you in Spanish. I was like, thank you. Like, we mm -hmm. met in a passing, never knowing that we would work together. But oh, when cool. I got the call that it was going to be Tito Nieves and Victor Manuel, at first they just told me, ah, they're looking for two artists, possibly mm -hmm. this one or possibly that one. Okay. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then after I did the vocal, they finally told me who it was after I recorded it. Oh, and wow. I was like, who is it? And they're like, Victor Manuel and Tito Nieves is doing it with you. And I'm like, no way. So it was almost like a surge of, and like, I was just in tears. I was anxious. I was happy, llorando, everything in one. Because it was a really tough time in my life when, mm -hmm. um, before that record came out. And um, it was like every single door opened after that. Every oh. single door. I remember I had lost my deal. Uh, I was no longer with by the by the Chaplatano Records. Mm -hmm. I was kind of lost. I was so confused. And uh, I remember going to the store with my husband one day, and it was a it wasn't the day. It was about six thirty seven o'clock at night, and there was mm -hmm. a guy in the store, and the guy walked by me and my husband, and he just says, "The sun only shines when you're a superstar," and I was like, Did you see? "My husband goes, Did you just hear what that man said?" If I tell you my hair stand up, uh, both turned around, the guy was gone. Oh. I didn't see the guy. He wasn't in the store. I was like, I swear this. He goes, Brenda, I just saw it. So when yeah. we went home, we decided to take the car for a ride because I was just was really not in a good place. Mm -hmm. And we got the call that um, the song was uh, going to be done with Victor Manuel and Vito Nieves and get ready for a huge, you know, a huge career. And we got signed to Sony, and after that, everything just exploded. Is this your entry into the, the Latin market, really? Or, or you, did you do Salsa songs before? No, no, no. I mean, I did Herida. I oh, did right. Pétalos del Fuego. I did um, No Necesito. Yeah. I did a lot of Te Sigo Esperando, Sola. Okay. But I think, um, I think that... Uh, this song after, after Platano and Parcha, um, my contract was up. I had an option to resign, but um, I just felt like I, I was growing in a different, you know, in a different Direction. aspect. And I just mm -hmm. felt like I needed to try to do a little bit. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to do a little bit more for my career to take it to another level. It's like a job. If you stay right. at a certain job, you'll never be able to get to another level so i decided to not renew my contract and i got picked up by sony with for the hombre and then that's when i came with uh, the, the new album with uh tentacion and i did the did the theme song for la isla de tentacion uh -huh. i went to uh, thailand to film that video and be oh, on that wow. show so everything just took off after for the oh, okay but, yeah because but all the songs way. All those songs that I know too, the other ones you mentioned, that's why I was like, I didn't, but it seemed like this was a different season in your life and it helped catapult into doing different levels of what you wanted to do. Yeah, it was my very first real Latin full album. It was produced okay. by Humberto. The first one was produced by Humberto Ramirez. And, okay. um, uh, an amusing, uh, an amusing, an amazing uh, trumpist, jazz yeah. trumpist and producer. He was definitely a teacher for me as well, forced to be reckoned with. He was always very helpful with my writing, with when I would sit up in the hotel and do my study. I mean, he was a producer. He didn't have to come sit with me. Right. He could sit there and work with me and, okay, let's go over line by line. I knew what the song was about. I would write it out in phonetic spelling just so I should make sure I know where the accent would take place. Yeah. Whether, you know, how to really pronounce the words. I had issues with R's because, you know, sometimes I don't know how to say R, you know? Yeah, so it's hard York. to go, like Amor, I used to say Amor. And they used to be like, no, it's amor. And I used to be like, oh. <laughs> but I ended up getting it. And, and I still believe I did in Spanish when I was on Atlantic Records. I was on, M excuse me, MCA Distributed, Mirage. You know, they were both affiliated. Yeah. Um, Atlantic and Mirage. And then I left them and I went to MCA. And when I put out, I still believe I was asked to sing it in Spanish. Um, I was asked is that a song that people ask, still ask you to sing a lot when you perform? Uh, yeah, I still do it. I still do it. Yeah, and it's I heard you sing sometimes it. because you know what's so crazy? I did it when I was so young. So when you yeah. have that little baby voice and <laughs> it, it's like when you sing it as a mature woman and an adult, it's, 
I mean, believe me, I was very young and I still had that wholesomeness to my voice. And it was the first time I ever fell in love. I have, um, obviously I have four kids. My first two children are from my boyfriend. I was with him since I was 14 till I was 28. And wow. I still believe it was like our little breakup song. And uh -huh. when I recorded it, she was my first everything, first love, first anything you can think of. Yeah. And first heartbreak. So when I got my heart broken by him and that song was submitted to me, I was like, okay, I could do this. So I just went in there and I think just being so young and so in love, I um I translated the song and it, it kind of just went through with so emotion and so much emotion and passion yeah. and just so many people could feel it, you know, and I, I take pride in that song because I'm always, always grateful to God that I was given that opportunity to sing that hit song. And, and, and I'll never forget Emil Diodado or, you know, Antonina Armada, you know, some of the writers, because I don't think I could have, I could have gotten a, a better song. So I think that that was yeah. good for me as well. Same oh, feeling yeah. I have with Epes Bueno Por La Boca. I yeah, feel like yeah. that song was meant for me. <laughs> and it was. I mean, it was written directly to me, for me. Right, right. Situations and things, Piloto knew what I was going through and could yeah. see and could hear. You know, he just was like, I made the perfect song for you and you're going to record it and it's going to be a smash. And I thank God, you know, not going to worry that yeah. I held on to it for that long because now I'm putting it out and it's almost like it's brand new for them. But for me, it's almost like giving birth to a brand new child and everybody's wow. like, wow, your baby's beautiful and healthy yeah. and yada, yada, yada. So yeah, I just, I can't tell you, Chef, I am on cloud nine. I, I took a nap before our meeting because yeah, yeah. I have been doing nonstop interviews, nonstop phone mm -hmm. calls, nonstop Zooms, um, mm -hmm. auditioning for a movie. I'm working oh. on my sides and I just, I just want to do this because I want to prove to not only myself, but for uh -huh. other women and other artists out there that really want this, that it, it really is never too late. Your career has been so, so vast. Like you have, I would say over a decade of career, right? How long have you been singing professionally? I mean, With professionally, huh. I mean, I would say, I would, I would give or take about maybe 16 because that's when everything started catapulting, you know, and taking off. But um, I've literally been singing on the tables, in the bathroom, yeah. with the brushes, since I'm about four or five, you know. My dad was in the industry. Um, yes, he was in a band, right? Yeah, he was in a group of Spiral Staircase. They had that song, I love you more today than mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I forgot my mom that song. Uh, um, but uh, he passed away from a heart attack uh -huh. about eight years ago, and uh, him and my mom were divorced very early on. You know, my mom, he always loved my mom, but my mom was one that she didn't like to travel. We also had my other brothers and sisters and um, she didn't want to leave them. And she was right. like, listen, you know, I know we have our children together, but I still have my other kids and I'm not leaving my kids. I don't want to be on the road. I want them to have a normal life. So they kind of split up. He would come mm -hmm. back and forth and visit. But I think the gift of music was always a, a, a part of me because of my dad. And mm -hmm. I would, he would call me and I would hear him play with the bands. The phone would be off the hook just so I can hear him playing. And I'm saying, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a little staircase. And I would listen and watch him and be like, oh my God, when he was on American Bandstand, I'm like, that's my dad. Uh, and so my mom cool. was like, yeah, that's your dad. And, and she used to always say that I always wanted to mimic being on stage every time I would see like shows with singers. Mm -hmm. And very early on, I think I was about five or six, but when I really, really started to get in, dive in so early, it was about 16. I got the contract at 15, within 15 and a half, 16, we signed the contract, I was singing. And nobody was, was like, you, you got in the industry and was somebody like, okay, I need to sign this girl, I need to get this girl, or because, I know in the, the way that the industry is, it's changed so much now. Like people start in the industry and I feel like the newer artists, they kind of have more control than what back in the day. I think it's because so many people have heard these stories. So like you at a young age where you just go, like were adults were just saying, hey, I'm going to sign you. This is a contract sign here. Well, you know, what's really funny. I used to go to a roller skating called Roxy's Roller Skating. It was in uh, 
it was on 18th Street between 10th and 11th in Manhattan. I used to go to heartthrobs. I used to break dance. I used to be in a crew called the, the Dynamic Dolls. Now, mind you, I wasn't really a dancer dancer. And I say that because I only knew how to do that whole pop lock thing like that. I used to do that, <laughs> but I would never spit on my head or anything okay, like that. Okay. So I was down with this crew and I always wanted to be down with them because they were popular. And I was always the kind of kid that they used to make fun of, you know, my buck mm -hmm. teeth. They used to make fun of. I got burned when I was a kid. So I got electrically burned. I bit on an extension and I actually got revived. I almost wow. died. And uh, I had a scar on my mouth. So I used to always get made fun of. So I felt like being with the cool kids would make me feel like I could fit in. So I started hanging out with them. But I, they always knew I sang. So I sang at their audition the theme song while they were break dancing and a guy named Nelson Cruz, God bless him, fast forward Nelson Cruz who just passed away of COVID this past year. Oh, man. Um, he came up to me and he's like, are you Brenda Starr? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yo, I need your number. And I was like, why? He's <laughs> like, I want to I wanna talk to you. I could get you a record deal. And I'm like, I'm not giving this man my number because I don't know him. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, he may even, like kill me or do something to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, why don't you give me your number? And then I'll see how, you know, how my mom called you. So he's like, yeah, cool. I'll give you my number. So he gave me his number. And then the next day, um, I told my mom and my mom was like, all right, well, then let your aunt take you. So my aunt Pat took me to, to meet up with him. And he took me to Atlantic uh, Mirage Records. There was a guy named Jerry Greenberg. And he introduced me to Jerry Greenberg. So only demo that I did have was the reel to reel. And it's like, it's like a tape. And I didn't have a cassette. And they used to play it at the roller rink. And people used to be like, that's Daisy Ladder song. And I was like, no, that's me. And they were like, that's not you. And I was like, yeah, it is. And then I would just start singing. They'd be like, oh, it is you. So the DJ Claude was like, you're going to get a record deal. So anyway, going back, fast forward, he took me, I went to have the meeting with my aunt. And back in the day, to get a record deal, you would need to meet the executive. And it's the same yeah. thing now. Okay. But fast forward, he offered me a deal, uh, came back the next day. Uh, he gave me a letter, and the letter had a check in it. And he says, we want to bring you on board. This is just something for your mom to read. And uh, if you think you're willing to do it, there's a check in there, sign the contract, and the money's yours. So I'm wow. here thinking it's $150 because I don't know how many zeros mean five, ten, hundred thousand. <laughs> like I was young, yeah. like we really don't know money back in the day. Right, you right, know? Right. Your parents handle everything for you. So I opened up the letter, gave it to my mom, gave her the envelope, whatever. She opened it up, and all I hear her is screaming. And I'm like, what happened? And she's like, oh my God, they're going to give you a record deal. She goes, oh, we got a check. And I'm like, for what? She, what is it? What? I said, it's $150. No, it's not. It's $50,000. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, you can have it. I, I just want to sing. She, she was like, I'm going to put it in the bank for you. I said, no, mommy. I said, furnish the whole house. So we threw all the furniture out. Me and my sister got our bedroom sets. We used to like share beds. There were seven of us. So yeah. me and my I got our bed, I got my record deal. And then after that, you know, everything started happening so fast. Yeah. Now, in the music industry, it's very hard to go to a major record label because they're dealing with your numbers and social media. Yeah. They're dealing with your followers. You, and I'm not trying to say this because there are talented artists out there, but then there are artists yeah. out there that don't really sing, that don't really um, have as much talent as other artists that have been working not only for years, not including me, or artists that are brand new that have amazing voice that yet to be discovered. So I think it's totally different now because back in the day, you would have to go to an exec. Now, God bless us, we have the opportunity yeah. of putting our own music out and creating our own empire. And that's what I chose to do because at one point I was just like, I'm not going to wait for another major to pick me up. I'm not going to yeah. go back and get picked up. I'm just gonna do it on my own, and if it works, God bless you. God bless me. If it literally, if it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, I'm just yeah. gonna keep hammering away. And I ran into a friend, and I had a meeting with them in New York. And the guy James was like, "Hey, you know, I'm going to Ecuador. I got some really big meetings, and uh, you want to give me something to play? Maybe I can let them check it out. Maybe they'll help me get you your star records out in overseas." Mm -hmm. Not knowing that it was Sony Latino, and he called me, he's like, B. Instead of calling me Brenda, he's like, B. And I'm like, yeah. 
hello. And I'm like, what's up, James? He's like, yo, I just got an offer. I was like, what? And I'm like, oh my God. So they love the song. And ever oh. since it's been that way. So yeah, it is very, very different chapter from back in the days to now. Yeah. You know, the manager dealt with it back in the day. But if you don't have big social media numbers or you don't have a connect in the radio or you don't have the force behind you, it's really just if it sticks, it sticks, you know? Yeah. So, it's so just you mentioned Star Records and I and I do have an image here, the graphic of Star Records. Are you Star Records? Yeah, I am. I am Star okay. Records. All right, is this strictly for yourself or with other artists as well? Um, I do have other artists. I have a young girl by the name of Haley Gray. She's more like a Billie Eilish type of vibe. Beautiful voice, very young, Southern girl, but got a voice to fill. She's unbelievable. Um, I only have her for now and myself on the label because I'm the kind of person that I really love to take my time. And the artistry is something very impassionate, important and impassionate for me. And it's not about bringing just everybody on board and overwhelming myself. I don't want to take off, take on more than I could chew. And so we've already completed her album cool. and, um, I hope to get it distributed, um, through a major as well. But with that being said, we've already put out a single. We're starting some recognition for her. And as you know, my daughter Gianna Isabella's on an yeah. independent as well, MMM. But, um, I hopefully wish one day that she'll come on board with me. You know, sometimes it's kind of hard because yeah. I didn't know where Star Records was going to go. So I didn't want to bring her in my crew until I know that I can prove myself. So right. using Haley Gray as a vessel that, look, G, I can do it with her. I can do it with you. Mm -hmm. So Haley, our kind of like uh, agreement was that she had to graduate. And remember how important it is to have something to fall back on. Yeah, yeah. So she's graduated and she's going to college. And now we're about to start pushing her single out. I just wanted to make sure she realized that beside having the music, we should always have something to fall back on. Yeah. And yeah. It's something that I, it's very important. I say that to my daughters. My daughter's a model and uh, she has her license in hair and makeup. Uh, yeah. She's in real estate. I mean, even if it's in something in the industry, because the industry is so right. big that you knowing real estate or knowing how to do your hair and makeup, you can tell the person, hey, you know, you can kind of help dictate your brand a little bit, a little bit better. Yeah, but it's, it's, more that, it's just really important that, you know, you're able to read those contracts and understand everything and no one's taking advantage of you or stealing right. your publishing. Like even with Haley, like there's songs that she's written and I've worked with her on it. And I'm just the type of person that I'm like, okay, well, this is how the publishing goes. We get this, oh, do you want some? And I'm like, no, if I didn't write it, yeah. I don't get it. So for yeah. me, it's very important to teach them that and education is a very, very big key in this industry. You gotta know your math, you gotta know how to read contracts, you gotta know how to do interviews. So things like that is very important. And if it doesn't work, you need something to fall back on. Right. For me, I, I fell back on music theory. I went to Berkeley School of Music I didn't finish, didn't get my degree, yeah. but I learned. Yeah. And uh, I basically got my, you know, my certified nurses aid degree when I was out of school. When I was out of music, I used to teach musical theory and take um, dementia patients and sing to them and work on that left side of the brain. And I did that because I love to help. But more than that, that was my fallback. I was a vocal coach. I was a vocal mentor. And I've been able to survive that way. But yeah. I've also been able to do that because I realized how important education was. So I didn't put my eggs in one basket. So that's right. why I kind of held off on Haley Gray. But yeah, she's another artist on my label. It sounds like there was a time where you weren't recording for yourself. At that time, were you uh, strictly just working on mentoring and doing a healing kind of uh, sessions with people as far as singing? I mean, I was doing, I was doing like mentorship for schools. I was going to schools. I was talking to okay. kids about the music industry, teaching them how important it is to stay out of bad company and yeah. how to move forward and never feel like it's, it's something that's not obtainable. Talk to the kids about growing up in the projects and not having right. money and coming from a, from, from a family that didn't have much. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I always believe that, you know, it is important to have something to offer, but when I wasn't doing my music, I was also working on, you know, see my doctor for, for my mental health, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and kind of learning how to deal with my outbreaks and 
I mean, I could be fine. And then yeah. 10 minutes later, I could just be in my room crying. Right. And kids would come in. And, and I think I dealt with a lot of that because I kind of felt like I was let down by so many people. There were so many things done to me. And I didn't know how to address it at such a young age. And I kind of just kept shrugging it off and shrugging it off. And I mean, I could say that I've been blessed to have an amazing husband. Because mm -hmm. I think somebody else probably would have been like, this is too much. I can't deal with it. Being an yeah. artist, you sometimes become very vulnerable. You also... To the world. Yeah, to the world. And it's very hard to trust a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But more than that, I never addressed my mental health or my issues with what was going on as a child for me. So when my mom put me in like music lessons and singing and dancing classes, when she put me in that, that was my escape. But when I got older, she didn't put me in anything. So I was on my own. So coming from being this huge superstar down to someone who lost it all, yeah. I didn't know what to do because I was so empty inside. I felt like my core of my soul was ripped. And wow. I was broken and I, I just, I, I got to a point that I ended up in a hospital and I, I finally realized that either I saved my life or I'm mm -hmm. just going to not be able to see my children grow up. And I got help. Yeah. And when I got help and to date, I still see my therapist yeah. and I still work hard on my mental health because, you know, there's too many people in this world that don't address it. And if you don't address it, it can eat you up alive and, and you can every so I just yeah. try to I just try to better myself every day and work hard to, to do what I love it seems like most recently there's been a lot of artists coming out and speaking about it I think because this new generation we're, we're a little bit more expressive one of them I know Jay Baldwin for sure has has shared about his mental health issues but you know back in the day like let's say like a Michael Jackson or, or other people who seem to have been tortured whether by the industry or by just normal human things that happen to us. That wasn't something that was spoken about, especially Latin, Latin families. It's not a, a topic Hi. that, yeah, it's not. We're very prideful as Latinos. We're like- Prideful yeah. and private. Prideful yeah. and private. And it's just something that we tend to just put a cap on it. And yeah. I think just doing the music was where my alter ego took place. I got on that right. stage, I was, only somebody else but I loved being her and I love doing it but when I don't do it it's like everything that happened to me young and middle-aged and, and and high school and junior high and grammar school it all resurfaces and, and I'm um, wondering have, now during COVID a lot of artists might be going through that thing that you're talking about well I mean, used I to the tours, you know yeah, well, you know, when we're not touring, it's, it's kind of hard for us because that's our natural. We love to do that. We love the yeah. connection with the people. You know, yeah. the people look at us like, oh, my God, I love your music. You got me yeah. through this. You got me through that. But little do they know, they got us through what we go through because yeah. they make us the artists we are, the, the, the yeah. public. They, they, they love our music. They give us a chance to perform it. And we give to them, but they give to us. But um, yeah. getting back to being home and, and COVID and everything, and not performing, you know, it's tough. It's tough because when you're not doing it, you sit in and, and you start thinking and your mind races. And dealing with it is bad because there's times that you forget. I used to remember <clears throat> when I would have the moments that I would want to rehearse and I would forget my words. Mm -hmm. And these are my songs for years, but it takes so much out of you. So right. this whole thing, but thank God, you know, there's so many therapists out there that you could just right. do Zoom with. My therapist is amazing. I call her, we talk. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I feel a certain way. And she's like, you got this, Brenda. And go she's yeah. like, you know, maybe just put the meditation music on. I'm really not one for medicating. I'm really, I really don't like it. I mean, if needed, it has to be done. Right. But for right. me, I have basically done a lot of just meditating and putting on like some beautiful um, sleeping mood for these stressing. Yeah. And I just turn the lights off and I lay down and I, I just breathe in and just exhale. For COVID, the thing for me has been ashaguanda and essential oils. <laughs> yeah? What yeah, is it, ashaguanda? Work. What is that? I'm going to send you a picture of the one that I have. It's a natural um, 
it's, it's like a natural st stress reliever type of thing where it basically feels like you've been hanging out with your best friend all day. Oh, really? Like you kind of have that high. Or like you have a new single that just dropped not a few hours ago. <laughs> oh, you can just have some edibles. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a singer. So for me, I mean, no, I can't, I can't lie. I've, you know, I've had my share. I smoke my little marijuana. <laughs> but it's very bad for your vocal cords. I already yeah. learned that. So I don't smoke. I don't smoke cigarettes. Yeah. I don't smoke at all. But I like to have my little CBD oil drops and my yeah. little edibles here and there. And I have to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be legal. It's natural. And here and there so for me to just distress and relax. I like to have my little edibles here and there. But um, <laughs> I, I could say I'm, I'm not addicted. have never been addicted. Thank you, Lord. But, yeah. you know, sometimes people deal with stress differently. But I love yeah. the fact that I can, you know, interact with my therapist. And, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just, hey, I'm just keeping it real. Everybody, what you see on the outside is not always what's on the inside. You're right about that. And I have a picture here of you where it's a portrait of, of you on the wall and you're standing there with a, another gentleman. Can you tell me about, about who's that with you and, and where is this wall at? Um, that wall is La Pareja de Fama and that's in, um, that's in uh, Peru. So there's oh, a wow. wall of fame and they have... Um, I think they have, yeah, they have Hector Lao. I think it was Hector Lao they have over there. Mm -hmm. They have Mark Anthony. They have Celia Cruz. They have, I think, Tito Puente, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I, can't remember, I can't remember right now. Um, all I'm um, seeing is you, so you could name all the and, people I wouldn't know. And they also have me, and I have to tell wow. you, that I wasn't expecting because I went there to do a concert, and um, I was doing press, and they said, listen, we have a little surprise for you. So I'm thinking, you know, we're going to go to this restaurant because they were yeah. talking about this restaurant, this restaurant, but it was right where the restaurant was. So we were supposed to go eat, but when we're pulling up, I see barricades of people behind them and just crowds. And I'm, I looked at my husband, I'm like, I have a show. And he's mm -hmm. like, no. And I'm like, well, what are all these people doing here? And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, what's going on? So yeah. finally, they pulled out over, and they had a blanket over it. And I came out, and the news was there. They were the Señora, the Señora, la que está, la que está. And the people were screaming, and I was like, hi. And I'm like, OK, am I doing a show, or what's going on here? <laughs> and then I got out of the car, and they said, for the recognitions, for the hard work that you put into the salsa music, Peru would like to give you the opportunity to acknowledge you for your talents. Wow. And they dropped the thing and I was just like, oh wow. my God. So it was an amazing experience. And then of course they had a microphone and I just started singing Rabia, Herida, Por Ese Hombre. I just sang some songs to them yeah. and it, obviously it wasn't a, a show that I was hired for, but yeah. it was just giving back and we just made it out to an amazing day. And then after that, we end up going to um, we end up going to the restaurant and, and and performing. But Chef, I have something special that I wanted to show you. Oh, yeah. I knew I was having this interview with you. I wanted okay. to show you the photos I took when I was younger because I remember okay. you said to me that you and I need to do a photo shoot. So yeah. I want to show you something that okay. I want to. My mission to work with you as my photographer is to recreate you. Wow, beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's classy. I want to do a vintage photo shoot. So, this nice. is me. Wow, this is me when I was 21. Ah, oh, those are beautiful. I love the, the emotion and the, and the hair. It's, wow, it's classic. We keep going. Those, do you know if those are film? Um, uh, yes, they are filmed. They're very old. Wow. So as you see this big poster behind me, that's coming yeah. down. That's my banner when I tour. So uh -huh. my office is going to be done solely in black and white. Uh -huh. and all mirrors and glass. So this is the look and the video. This is the photo shoot that I want to recreate. Let's do it. Yeah, it's beautiful. It has like a Marilyn Monroe type of, <laughs> type of vibe. Beautiful.
Very classy photos. And this one I get so mad at. It's so old. It's got a little bend. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That one looks like a Madonna thing. <laughs> yeah. hey, you think? Yeah, yeah. Then, Very pretty. They have all those different wigs, right? Yeah, oh my god. I was loving the, the wig. Was this for fun or was this for something, a, a magazine or something? This was for a magazine. I did it for Rolling Stone. Oh, and wow. then another magazine. So we were just recreating, bringing back the vintage Hollywood. Wow. Brenda killing like, it. Yeah, that's very Hollywood. Yeah, so. Have you been in a movie or do you want to be in a movie? Um, yeah, I was in B Street, obviously. Okay. I was in the movie Slow Dancing in the Big City, which was okay. uh, produced by uh, John G. Allison. He produced the movie Rocky. Yeah. And uh, I was also in a movie, uh, I was in a Coca-Cola commercial. Um, I was in a Gap commercial. And right now, I'm actually reading for a part, Mrs. Colada, and um, she's like bilingual. She's like a really like stern woman, but really with a warm heart. Yeah. So I just got the sides. I'm reading that actually. When I'm done with you, I'm gonna film my part and send it oh, to wow. the director. And you know, we'll see how that goes. But um, I was supposed to do a movie called An East Side Story with Edie Chacon and Mark Anthony. You know that I'm dying to work with both of them. I actually wrote Edie Chacon's husband. <laughs> Oh, really? They live in Orlando. They live in Orlando. And then... Uh, no, really? Yeah, they live in Orlando. I so I know, said, but I love her. Yeah, she's love a, her. That's, that's another icon. She's, that a, I would she's a legend. Her. She's definitely yeah. a legend. I was yeah, watching really her last night on um, YouTube. I was just watching her, like, you know, her <laughs> dancing and everything. And somebody told me, oh, my God, on your new video, when you dance, you remind me of Edie Chaco. And I was laughing because I was like, oh, my God, I love her. Yeah, because you have the outfit with the flames. <laughs> Dude, I have to tell you, I, I said, why did they wait till the end of the night to decide to shoot the dance part? 15 hours later, my hip was on fire and I knew I had my surgery. So we had all the routines. I was like, I'm going to just sneak it through. Meanwhile, it was killing me. But um, I have to tell you, I, I, I plan on doing more dancing because the guy that choreographed Edie Chacon's tour was Eddie Vega. He won uh -huh. Star Search. Wow. Now, um. He was from the Bronx. He was my choreographer. And um, I remember when he wouldn't work with me, he would fly to Puerto Rico and work with Ibi Chacon for the Ibi Chacon show. And then That's he would crazy. be the guy that was on the beach with her, dancing with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long story short, just looking at her, she's just, I think she's an icon. I think, honestly, everybody raves about Jennifer Lopez. I love and adore her. She's great. People. She was she's before iconic. Jennifer Lopez. But she was before Jen. And let me tell you something. She had amazing moves. She's very sexy. Yeah. She has a, I think she had a very good voice from what I heard. I mean, I thought yeah. she was really good. And, and obviously she had her time and she was very successful. Yeah. But, um, she was an all around performer and the first vedette yeah. and she crossed over into a lot of American um, John, interviews and she was on Saturday. Just for, she was on a lot of American shows as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love her. I love her. When they mentioned that, on one of my comments yesterday, oh my God, you remind me of Edie Chacon from back in the day. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's definitely yeah, yeah. a, a She's amazing. I hope we get that. Yeah, me too. I'll let you know when it happens. So yeah, what was it? Is there, is there is a script with them three? Um, well, so yeah, it was a movie called An East Side Story, but unfortunately it never really came out. Um, okay. But you know, Mark was obviously really young, so was I. Yeah. We all used to hang out back in the day, hard drive, studio, you know, he was always humble, sweet guy, yeah. super funny, super funny. <laughs> and I mean, he was like I was, you know, everybody would always shut a door, like he sang freestyle at one point, yeah. he never gave the he deserved. And I guess he really gained his recognition when uh, he came out with the side stop. And I have to tell you, he's my, him and um, Frankie Ruiz are, are mine and my husband's favorite Latin male Ruiz. singers. And uh, yeah. I love his work, and uh, I'm extremely, extremely proud of him. And uh, yeah. I'm glad that I have the opportunity to have known him as a friend and mm -hmm. as a person and as an individual. Because I think that, you know, as time goes on, uh, people become stars and forget where they come from. But I just feel like every time we run into each other, even if it's just to say a quick hello 
and a quick hug, I can yeah. feel, I can feel the, the honesty and the, the, you know, just the, the realness. Right. And, and that's the New York region. <laughs> yeah, the New York region, exactly. But that's what I love about him because I right. know that he, you know, basically, he just keeps it 100, so. Yeah. And, and you do him. too. You're the same way. That's why you, you attract that in other people. What advice would you give for somebody who, you know, obviously in your career, you've had it, you said professionally 16 years, but you've basically been singing since you were a little girl on top of tables and, I'm, you know, singing wherever you can. Um, I also like that you were sharing how you were a go-getter. You went after what you wanted. What advice would you give to anybody who maybe doesn't know uh, or maybe they feel bad because they had a hit and then they're like kind of flat or maybe their 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 labels not really believing in them like they believe in themselves what advice would you have for another artist out there that um maybe going through a rough time even during quarantine um you know same advice i gave myself you know we're gonna have our moments where we feel hopeless we're gonna have our moments when we feel like we don't have it anymore because that's what tends to happen people start saying or you keep you feel it or see it or hear it uh, it starts making you think you could doubt yourself the only thing you can do is really just dive more and more into your music and figure out a way you can hustle through it because i'm a hustler and if you're yeah. not going to make it happen for me i'm going to make it happen for me myself okay. you gotta especially we have the advantage of all social media if it takes you getting online and doing a live to just keep promoting yourself, to keep your name out there. Because there's been times that I don't have a hit record, that I haven't had a label, that I haven't had a manager, yeah. that I haven't had the support system and the team that I wanted. But what I would do is I would do lives. And, and I took advantage of the social media platform. So I'd watch your lives with your friends and I'd laugh with those, a girl that you'd have security and all that. <laughs> and what? A girl that you would have and you would do your trips. And you would do your lives with her and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, for me, sometimes go out with your a best buddy of yours, yeah. whether it be a guy or a girl. If you're a girl, you want to hang out with the girls. Mm. For me, sometimes get away from all the negative stuff because it consumes you. And then especially right. as an artist, like, I don't care. And I have to be honest, it could be regular people, too. Right. But I notice a lot, a lot, a lot of artists are the ones that deal with the mental health and the issues yeah. of feeling not good enough because when we're out there we're on that stage we feel like we're riding and flying high that's our get high yeah but right. i think when we don't do it it feels like we lose ourselves so right. my advice to someone who wants to get into the industry or who is or has been in it already don't let anybody determine your success it's up to yeah. you to make it happen no you're not going to be able to have all those major radio stations play your songs or no you may not have the connection to be put on all those major television shows create your own channel create your own music push it with your friends create your own label prove to them or prove to you that you can do it and if you feel that you can do it then it can happen but you also have to remember every day is not going to be easy there's going to be days yeah. that you feel lost and incomplete but then there's going to be days that you're going to feel such beautiful satisfaction because you got those fans and those supporters that were with you when you were up here and if they're with you when you're still down here then those are the true ogs that you need to remember so yeah. for me i just the only advice i could give is don't let somebody determine your happiness and don't let them strip the gift that you have the only one that could take that gift from you is that guy up there that's, that's right. it. So that's just right. keep, you know, palante, 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 palante. Right. That's right. Well, I think it's been uh, encouraging just to hear you share, frankly, about your career, about your journey, to see, um, you know, to see the photos, but hear the story behind these photos. We definitely got to go ahead and recreate. Yes, let's do it. Me. Yeah, I got the studio ready. We can do something. I'm down. I'm down. I'm trying to move this light because this light is hot. <laughs> I got back. Yeah. But I had this whole interview. I'm sorry. Were you able to see me because it was too No, it just got like that now. It was you were fine. It just got the Holy Ghost just got on your face and then it just like, shines right on me. Yeah, Shine on me, Baba. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and then I wanted to 
tell you that I got yeah. a really great song. I went yesterday to the studio and I laid the very, very beginning uh, stages of the vocal. It's a song called Quédate. And if I tell you, I have to say that I've done songs before, mm -hmm. but I've never sat in my car and cried. On my yeah. way home, I put it on and I was like, wow. It was yeah. just, it's not even about the way the voice sounds because as we get older, we lose some of our vocal register mm -hmm. because, you know, we get older, you know? Right. Um, some people are gifted like, uh, you have Aretha Franklin, Celia Cruz, you know, they still got that core on their voice. But, you know, I've been doing it, and uh, long story short, I recorded the song yesterday, and I got in the car, and I hit some notes that I didn't think I could ever even do to get wow. to the point, but it's still today. Yeah. And I just sat in my car and cried, not because of the situation with my mental health and back and forth, but because of the fact that my prayers are being answered that, you know, I'm seeing the vision. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make that vision come to life. I just feel like I'm doing all the hard work times two because I really, really, really want it that bad. Even if I'm in it for another decade, at least yeah. I know yeah. that I'm doing what I love. And when I heard it, I felt like Guido did an amazing job with the, with the engineering and working with me yesterday. And I think I got another hit coming right after Press yeah. Metal for La Oca, so I'm super excited. So I'm so, so satisfied. Wait. Good, I'm excited. I mean, and I heard you live. I don't. Your vocal range is crazy. You you really sang, sang, sang. So I'm excited to hear that. Well, I try, baby. You know. <laughs> That's all I know yeah, how to do. That's all yeah, I know yeah, how to yeah. do, and I hope I can have it for as long as God could keep it here. So I'm, I always thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a gift. It is a, a gift. gift. It is a gift, and you don't abuse it. Amen. Well, thank you so much for taking time out. I know you've been busy with uh, the new single and uh, everything going on. I love what I'm seeing on social media. Uh, congratulations again. And I'm here to support whatever you need. Let me know. Thank you so much for just taking time extra to, to share with me today. Always my pleasure. Send my love to your cousin, though, the Flaquita that's always dancing. <laughs> oh, Blanca. <laughs> oh, my God, she Blanca. Yay. <laughs> when you do a music video in Orlando, Miami, we'll bring her out, okay? She'll be dancing. I'm down. Like I'm too. down. I'll bring her on stage. Forget about the video. How about she one of my shows? I'll be like, I got to say out there. And I'll bring her up. <laughs> yeah, she'll die when I tell her this. Thank yeah, you so much, so much. That I, that I, I recognize her. She caught my eye. <laughs> I will. Uh, thank you, Brenda. You have a good night. Thank you again for your time. God bless your music. And I can't wait to see where this uh, song is going to take you in your career. Me too. Thank you for the help. Always. <laughs> for I sure. Blessings. You, you know that. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Mi gente, guys, don't forget subscribe and watch this next video. This video is going to be really good too.